Won't go. Rebound tipped by Thompson. Knocked away by Brown. Here comes Rozier. Throws it down. This building has exploded. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Hollywood Sports. Guys, I want to give you my reaction to last night's game. Uh, Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Boston Celtics Eastern Conference Finals Game 2. Um, and what I want to talk about, guys, is that LeBron started playing one-on-one -on -one basketball in the beginning. Instead of playing five-on-five -five basketball, I was thinking, man, that ain't going to last long. That ain't going to last long. But, man, LeBron made it work because he was on fire, man. Uh, I mean, he carried his team. He carried the Cavs in the first half. LeBron was like in the zone. He just, he just, you could tell he just came out with a certain attitude that he, that's what he had to do. And hopefully, maybe their plan was to get out ahead of Boston and get a jump since Boston was at home. Maybe, maybe the Cavs wanted to get the crowd out of the game early because LeBron just went off, man. And, you know, that first half. I mean, the Cavs was playing good defense. Plus, Boston was shooting horrible field goal percentage. I mean, you know, the Cavs was kind of packing in the paint, kind of roaming the paint a little bit and making Boston take those uh, those jump shots. Boston kept shooting those threes. I mean, they weren't hitting them, guys. They were not hitting those shots. And that's what, to me, kept the Cavs in the game and made that first half so great, man. They had a horrible shooting percentage. I don't know what that percentage was, but Boston was not hitting their shots. And when you're shooting from the outside like Boston was and not hitting your shots, it gave the Cavs, the Cavs a lot of opportunities, man, to stay in the game and to, and to get their shots. At least let LeBron keep them in the game when Boston wasn't hitting their shots. Because usually when the team's not hitting their jump shots, that leaves open, that leaves fast breaks open and stuff like that. But, you know, Boston did a good job since they have so much energy. They're so young. They did a good job by getting back on defense to kind of help them stay in the game in that first half. But in the second half, man, but in the second half, the Cavs did not come out with the same intensity like they started and, and with, with the game. Like they started the game. They did not come out with that same intensity. And the way Boston plays, guys, with that high energy, that high intensity all the time, they play that way all the time, guys. Um, Boston's speed helped uh, when, the, when the Cavs started getting tired. Boston's had, they just got so much speed. Those guys are fast. They quick to the ball, they, the rebounds, the, the loose balls. They just got that speed about them, man. And... And Boston started to be more focused offensively in that third quarter. You mean they weren't taking so many wild shots. They took a lot of bad shots in the first half. But it seems like when they came out in that third quarter, they took more focused, more balanced. They were taking better shots, better shooting percentages um, in that third half. I mean, in the third quarter. And so then Boston also picked up their intensity, man, that deep defensive intensity. Now, LeBron got back into his one-on-one -on -one game. And LeBron kind of held off a little bit, but he started missing some. And like I said, when you started missing your shots, it's going to give the, the other team more opportunities. And that's what happened to LeBron. He was not hitting that high percentage like he was in the first quarter, in the first half. And, but Kevin Love gave him a boost. Kevin Love gave him a boost, man. Kevin Love just got, got hot. And he kept the Cavs in the game, basically, in that third quarter, in my opinion. But Boston plays with so much intensity and energy, guys. Like Tim Legler said when he was doing talking about the Boston Celtics, he said Boston is multi-dimensional, guys. They're a multi-dimensional team. And he's right. The Cavs are a single dimension. You know, they, they don't have a lot of the, the, uh, 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 options like Boston have. He said Boston was multi-dimensional I went man that's a good point but at the but um, in a lot of ways um, they wear you down Boston just wears you down because they're always coming they're always pushing they're always playing defense they're always just moving they always just at you man and I think Boston is kind of like it reminds me of the Oregon Ducks back in their day 
You remember the Oregon Ducks in college football? You know, they had so many interchangeable pieces. Every play somebody new was coming in, a new back, a new lineman, based on what play they were running. They just wore you down. They just, they were so deep on their offense and defense, they could switch and, and uh, uh, do substitute so many times. By coming to third and fourth quarter, they would wear teams down and then they would just break away. Well, that's kind of what Boston does, man. They just, you know, just eat at you and hit on you and bang on you. They just won't go away. They're just scratching on you. They talking trash. They talking trash. They just wear you down and wear you down. And I think they wear you down mentally also. Not only physically, but mentally. Boston just keep coming, man. They're, they're like this little kid. They just keep begging for candy, keep begging for candy. You know, they just, they're just so uh, intensified, you know? And so I think that's what Boston does, guys, because those guys got so much energy and intensity, they just wear your butt out. And that's kind of how they I were, they reminded me of the Oregon Ducks back in the day when the Oregon Ducks used to be really good. You know, Boston plays with consistent pressure. They wear your butt out. They wear you down. And that's that synergy I was telling you guys about that Boston has. When you have guys with a bunch of energy and they playing together with a bunch of energy, they bring you synergy, man. And you cannot beat synergy because synergy is a force. And I think Cleveland is starting to feel that force. You know, game one. Now in game two, they're thinking, man, these Boston, these, these guys are just going, they're going eight, man. They're going, wow. We don't, they don't, Man, can you imagine Lou, the coach? What is he going to try to figure out now? LeBron's going to help him. All the co assistant coaches are going to help. They got to come up with a game plan to slow Boston down. I don't know what they're going to do, guys, but they got to slow that synergy down, that force. When you have a focused, energetic group and well-coached, listen to me, guys. When you have a focused energetic group that's well coached they're going to be hard to beat they're going to be hard to beat now people always say you look at what russell westbrook and and, and and the guys they had right carmel anthony and what's the other guy name uh, uh, uh um you guys know what i'm talking about they had their big three you think why can't they win because westbrook is taking all the shots they're not playing team ball their offense is standing around watching him do the same thing. LeBron kind of got into that mode, you know, but he, he LeBron is the king, though. He can carry he can carry those kind of styles of play a little longer. But, man, it ain't going to work throughout the playoff. The Cavs are going to have to play team ball up and down the floor. And if you look at Boston, those guys play both ends of the floor, offense and defense. They don't take no time off. They, they substitute in and out good. They got guys coming off the bench with energy, right? They just come at you and come at you on the offense and defensive end. They're fighting for rebounds. They're fighting for loose balls. They just wear your butt out. And like I said, man, I'm telling you, Boston is going to the, at the NBA Finals. And I said this series would go Game 7. I'm still going to say Game 7. It's not over yet, but it's not looking too good. Boston, if Boston steals one game in Cleveland, it's done. It's done. It's done. If they split, and I don't know who how they play it in this series, uh, but I don't know if they play like three in a row in Cleveland or not. But hey, man, if Boston takes one, they're gonna be. They're gonna. All they need is one more game. The series is over. All right, guys, that's my say on this thing. Boston is just a pound of energy. And, hey, they started shooting better in that second half, and they wore Cleveland down, man. Even LeBron. LeBron's, what, 36, 35? He can't carry four quarters like that like he did in that first quarter. But I don't know, guys. They got to go back to Cleveland. Like I said, it's not over yet. You know, Cleveland can still come out, get behind their crowd. LeBron can get behind their crowd. You know how Cleveland played when they first got rid of Isaiah Thomas? They got rid of all those players and, and bring in all these different guys. Remember that first game they played together? You remember the Cavs playing? That's how they need to play against Boston. Man, they were they were passing the ball together. They were working together. They were looking for teammates. They were making an extra pass. And LeBron was just seemed like he was in a candy store. That's the kind of, I would go back and look at that film when they first got together and how they were playing good together. And that's how they should attack Boston. And if they go back home with that energy of their crowd, Knowing they down two, 
they can get back in this series. All right, guys, I'm done. I could go forever on this on this stuff, man. Uh, this series is awesome. You got the Western Conference and the Eastern Conference, man. This is the best thing we can ask for in playoff basketball. So, Bobby, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that thumbs up button. But if you're new to the channel, hey, hey, hey hit that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button. Join the team of Hollywood Sports. And, man, we can win this thing together no matter how you look at it. And as always, hopefully I will see everybody on my next video. Thanks for watching.